Hello and welcome to Bruce Springsteen Guitar Lessons. Today's lesson is going to be the classic live version of Prove It or Night from September 19th, 1978 at the Capitol Theatre in Passaic, New Jersey. Thanks very much to subscribe star Jim Fitzpatrick for the request.
Hello and welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what we're gonna do is go through all the individual parts. Okay, so let's now take a look at that massive intro solo, that kind of iconic 78 solo. So basically what happens is there's 40 bars I worked out, so 40 bars of piano, bass and drums, and then Bruce comes in, okay? So a lot of the stuff is in um, F sharp minor pentatonic and F sharp natural minor scale, okay? So what we're doing is we're starting on the fourth fret of the D string and loads of vibrato in this solo as well. Okay, so it starts off in the fourth fret of the D string uh, and you're gonna play that note for uh, six beats. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, and he kind of picks it again twice. So, so two more picks of that, three and a four, and then goes into the next bar, uh, again, loads of aggressive uh, vibrato. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and a four, and one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> and then you've got another, that ties for another two and a half beats. And then you've got this, kind of something like that. So it's this uh, F sharp minor pentatonic first shape. You're not familiar with that. So you're doing a kind of a little fast run, two, four, two, four on the D and the G string. Now I think he's doing this kind of, um, so this is kind of more F sharp minor. Uh, second fret, uh, B string, and a semitone bend and release, okay? So over one bar. And I think he's doing a pre-bend. So a pre-bend is where you have the kind of desired pitch already up, and then you pick it and gradually, and he's basically going um, pre-bend release. And this is on the fourth fret of the G string. And then he's kind of going pre-bend release, release it, bend, release it, and then bend again, which is pretty crazy. Especially if you're not used to high gauge strings um, uh, as well. So. And then you've got this classic. Okay, so that's bend release on the fourth fret of the um, G string. And then pull off. So you've got this one, two, almost three notes with one pick here. One. And then pulling off. So bend. And pull off to the second fret G. And then classic kind of pentatonic riff. Fourth fret D string. Okay. Okay, and then we've got this uh, next bar. Uh, you've got this um, kind of quick grace note hammer on to the sixth fret of the G string. Two and three, four. So you're going to go, and this is now in the second shape of, of the F sharp minor pentatonic. One, two, and three, four. Okay. One, two, and three, four, one. And then that's kind of tied to the next bar for half a beat. And then you're going to do four, slide down to two on the G. And then another two hits on the second fret of the G. Um, again, check the walkthrough. Uh, and you can also, don't forget in all YouTube videos, you can click that cog icon and slow it down just to double check all the timing and, and things like that. Okay, so uh, let's do those last two bars. So one, two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. And you've got a second fret G again. One E and, and then. So you've got two, one, two, one on that final bar. So I'll just play that first page, show um, the first part of the solo. So, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. That bend, release, bend. And then second shape, two and three, So there's a second page. Again, again, he's kind of completely improvising. So he would have done this, I think obviously there's the big extended intro, he would have done it quite a few different ways. Um, I think it's quite an iconic one. So here, this next bit. Um, so second fret G, and then he's doing this kind of hammer on pull off, one, two, one, uh, and that's kind of triplet quavers or eighth notes, uh, well, sorry, triplet semi-quavers or sixteenth notes, that's basically three notes in half a beat. So you've got one and, one and, one and, and then two, and then 
Um, so then you've got the D string, second fret, and then grace note slide, quick slide, two to four. So one and two and three, four. And then he's kind of, again, occasionally hear some open strings and things like that as well. So then you've got this, um, we're up to the first shape of the F sharp minor pentatonic, but an octave higher. So you've got this um, on the and of four, you've got this, something like that. So 14, hammer on to 16, and then start the next bar with the same thing. And then he's got this 14, that um, a, a hammer on and then pull off with that kind of, um, where you're doing three notes in half a beat. So 14, 16, 14, hammer on, pull off. And then 16, A string. And then he's doing a kind of slow bend into the next bar, 16. Um, 16 fret G. And I think he's doing something like this, where he's playing the open B and then the second fret E. And then bend and release, fourth fret G, and then. Okay, so that those last three bars. And then he's kind of got this kind of uh, cool or rhythmic pattern. And uh, once he's done that first, uh, well, that first one. So he's basically got sort of three and a half bars-ish of that kind of pattern. And he does another bend on the 12th fret of the E string, again, slow bend into the next bar. And then he's doing a double stop 2-2 uh, two, two on the uh, B and the E strings. And then that kind of, uh, that, which we have had before. And, and then um, I'm just quite unsure how to notate this on the, on the walkthrough, uh, but it's basically slightly, you know, sliding up and down. Uh, it looks like I put it on a, a, as a pick scrape on the tab, but that's, it's basically just getting that sliding up and down motion. And then the second time you do that, you stop it dead and then Bruce is kind of doing that funny thing to the audience. And then he's basically got three bars-ish uh, of just a, a rest. And then you're coming in again with that. Three, four, and then. And then he's kind of got this cool little octave thing going on. Okay, so you've got this four on the D. And there's a lot of triplet crotchets or quarter notes. That's basically three notes in the space of two beats. So it's basically da, 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 da. There's a lot of that sort of going on for the next section. So what happens is you've got this octave shape, F sharp there, and then F sharp on the high E. So you've got this, that's the first bar of that. And then you kind of slide into the two frets up here. So six and four. And slide back to two, and then open E string. And then you're gonna do uh, two, zip, zero, then four, two. And then you're gonna go up two frets again. Then slide into seven and five. So that's the first kind of two sections of the guitar. So let me just play that kind of second half of what we've done so far. So. the first bit of the solo. Okay, so it's parts one and two of the solo. It's now a look at parts three and four of this classic intro solo. So you're gonna keep going on these kind of triplet crotchets or quarter note patterns. So two, zero, and then go up four, four, and then two, four, two. So again, it's this classic octave pattern. And then you're sliding up to the sixth fret, six and four, and you go up to seven and nine, uh, nine and seven, sorry. 
just once, and then down to two zero. And then two zero four. Uh, so two zero up to four, then back to two zero. Two zero two. Okay, so just play those last five bars. Cool, so after you've done that bit, this is where the kind of full drum beat comes in um, and it kind of picks it up. You know, it's all about kind of layers and it's gradually building up that kind of uh, intensity. So, so you're going to go into the second, um, this is a four bar phrase, it's pretty much repeated twice. So four, grace note, hammer on to six. One, two, and three, four, and. That's the time for that. One, two, and three, four, and. And four G, four and five B, six G. Then, and then you do a bend, a full tone bend, four fret G, and back to the four fret G, and then first fret G, and then you've got a grace note hammer on, one to two on the G, first fret G, second fret D, and then slide two to four. Let's just play those four bars again. twice that bit. And he's basically starting off the same thing, but an octave higher, yeah? Actually, technically in the fifth shape of the F-sharp minor pentatonic. So this is 12 um, to 14, hammer on on the B, two and three, four and. And then you go, and I would bar the 12th fret B and E, then 14th fret B, then I think there's a slight pause, and then you can do a pre-bend. Uh, so you, that's quite a challenging thing to do. So um, have it already bent up, then pick it and gradually lower it. And then ninth fret um, B, and then a grace note, hammer on, nine to 10, nine on the B, then nine G, and nine grace note slide. Again, lots of vibrato as well. It's pretty much, you can't, yeah, just lots of vibrato. Then you've got a bend and release, 12th fret B. And then 12th fret B again, 12, 12 again, and the B and the E. And then he's doing a bend and release. I think he might be doing another 12th fret here. And then 10th fret B, and then 12th fret, bend and release. And 9th fret B. And hammer on, nine to 10 again, nine on the B, nine G. Okay, okay, so let me just play what we've done so far. So this is kind of the uh, part three of the uh, solo. Full band bit. Changes his drum beat here. Do that twice. And go up an octave higher. Okay, and then you've got the, another bend relief. Okay, and then you've got three bars of basically building up lots of vibrato on the um, 16th fret of the G string. So you've got this, uh, again, three over two. Three bars of that on the 16th fret D. So bar two, bar three. And then he's going one, two, three, one, two, three. So shifting into the 14th fret B. And then the third finger, 17th fret B. And then 19th fret now. Which is actually the second shape of the F sharp minor, just right up here. So, so again, you're gonna do three bars of this 19th fret B. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, 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 one, two
two, three, one, two, three. And then four tone bend uh, uh, on the um, 19th fret of the, of the E string. And then just before we go into this really fast bit, it's hit a 17th fret of the B string. Now, this is basically what I call like an anchor riff where you're kind of always hitting, you've always got a kind of a note that you're hitting in, in between each kind of riff section. Um, My Schroner by the Knack is a great example of that. So basically this, the, the anchor note, the one you're gonna kind of come back to is the 17th fret of the B string and also the 17th fret of the E string. So you, I would bar that, okay? And then what you're doing is you're gonna pull off uh, 21 to 17. Okay, so it's, this is a triplet um, semiquavers or 16th notes. So 20, 21, 17, and then 19, pull off to 17, and then 17. So it's basically a six note riff that's repeated, uh, where are we? Yeah, so just repeated throughout the bar, okay? So you got this. It doesn't have to be too, it's, it's not exactly that every time. I think um, that's pretty close, I think. So you've got this one and two and three and four and. That's essentially what's happening because if you're counting it quavers, one and each quaver or eighth note will have three notes in it. So one and two and three and four and. And it's doing that four bars of that. So one and two and three and four and bar two, bar three, bar four. Okay, and then you got a four tone bend just after a bit of a gap, I think half a bit gap. And then and he's doing a double stop at 14, 14 here. So one. And then he's uh, doing a another one of those, and then bend a release on the four fret G, and then um, four tone bend 17B, and then four tone bend on the 19th fret E, and then, so that kind of technique we had earlier, the bend release pull off, you're doing that, but all the way up here now, 19, bend release, pull off to 17, and then, okay, he's doing three notes here. Two and three, four and. So two and three, two and three, four and. So three notes on the 19th fret B. And then 17th fret B. And then you've basically got two bars of 17th fret. And just right at the end of the second bar, you're gonna to start to bend it, okay? So you're gonna go like this. One, two, three, one, two, again, that triplet, crotchet, quarter note feel. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so this is kind of, I call this kind of part four of the solo. So let me just kind of play that part four. So you're gonna do the um, 16th fret uh, triplet quarter note thing for three bars. Bar two. Uh, then three bars of the 19th, uh, 19th fret of the B. Okay, and then 19th fret, four tone bend E. Slow bend, 17th fret B string, and then you got that cool kind of six note phrase. So one and two and three and four and. Do that for four bars and a short break then. Again, be quite really aggressive with the bends. Um, you're really giving it so much energy in this song. So one. Um, sort of slide up and down and then, and then another four tone bend here, 17 fret B and then. And then you start off the triplet thing again. Of course, that's part three, parts three and four of the intro solo. Okay, so let's now take a look at part five, so the final part of this classic intro solo. So once you've started building up that bend on the 17th fret B string, you're gonna carry on for another one and a half bars, we've just done that roughly. So you're gonna do one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, and then basically what you do is you start 
building up. I think this is roughly what he's doing. So you, again, same rhythm, uh, triplet quarter notes or um, crotchets. And you're kind of, I think he's doing a bend on the 16th fret whilst keeping the 17th fret B going. And I think he's doing vibrato as well. So this is basically, for the rest of the solo, you're basically just doing this. So what I'll do is I'll just play this kind of end of the solo. So one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then bass doing that and then kind of signaling to the band, I think it's going to start. And then you go into the kind of the end of the intro section. So cool. So that's the intro. Again, pretty crazy working this out. Um, I think I've got it as close as I possibly kind of can. Might be a few bits here and there that you might want to sort of change or think there's something else going on, which is great. Cool, so the song is um, in roughly 115. I've got a feeling that they might speed up a little bit. So 115 BPM is in the key of A major. Okay, let's take a look at the chords, okay? So we've got B5. So um, second fret A, third finger, fourth fret D, little finger, fourth fret G. So I've actually done the album version of uh, Prove It All Night. I think he's doing He's rocking out a little bit more in the live version. So B5, a few more power chords rather than bar chords, I think is happening. So B5, and you've also got a B minor. So that's two, four, four, three, two, barring second fret from the A string. B minor chord, classic chord. And D5 chord. So can you play this from the A string or the D string? really thick kind of sounding chord. Uh, so we'll be doing this at the end of the intro and also in the break section. So think of a D5 as D major without your middle finger. So zero, two, three, first and third fingers, okay? Also D sus two I think is happening as well. Occasionally, possibly. That's open E string as well. That's like D major without your middle finger. Okay, a normal D major chord. Um, okay, so zero, two, three, two. And then you've also got E major chord. So first, second, and third fingers. Zero, two, two, one, zero, zero. Using your first, second, and your third fingers. Classic E major chord, A major. Now Bruce often plays it by barring with his first finger. So you're playing the middle four strings here. A, then D, then G, then B. Just make sure you don't hit that. F sharp there. Okay, cool. And then we've got an F sharp five. Again, this is mainly for this in the power chords are for the that, that kind of end of the intro just after he's finished the solo and the break session. So F sharp five, so that's two, four, four. Ooh, no, E string. And then also an F sharp minor of a C sharp, which is quite common for Bruce. It's basically instead of doing a full F sharp minor chord. You're going to be, this is basically called an F sharp minor over C sharp. So bar the G, the B and the E strings um, with your first finger and then put your third finger on the fourth fret A, little finger on the fourth fret D. Strum from the A string. So that's an F sharp minor with C sharp. So in the song structure, which I'll put up on the screen now, again, all the song structures will be on the in the description. I'll just refer to it as an F sharp minor. Okay, just to keep things simple. Again, any chords in brackets will mean there's more than one chord in that particular bar um, and hopefully you can sort of break it down and hopefully you find that useful. Okay cool so now what we're going to do so just after he's finished those crazy bends signal to the band to the to start you've got this kind of really powerful ending with that cool, cool piano um, riff and then he's sort of really rocking out with a bar chord so sort of thick kind of distortion as well so B5 for a whole bar Two, three, D5, two, three, four, da, 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 da. and then you got D5, and I think he's doing so that's for two beats. The D5, this is the fourth bar, so the rest, the first three bars are semi briefs or whole notes, they last for the whole bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then the next D5 is for two beats one, two, an E major for a crotchet or quarter note and then two quavers or eighth notes. So down, down, up. 
and, they had, and then the kind of um, do, 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 kind of the very recognisable riff as well. So you've got A major, and then I will do a bit of that as well. You can see him doing that on the video. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. F sharp five, A five, F sharp five. Okay, cool. So I just play that end of the intro. So one, two, three, four. Cool. Now, uh, later on in this song, I think before the sax solo, you've basically got those first four bars again. So, da, 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 da. Um, so the B5, D5, B5, then D5 and E major. I'm going to do those later in the song. Cool. Okay. So now next we're going to go on to the first and second verses. Okay. So the first and second verses are exactly the same structure wise. So it's a 10 bar phrase. Okay, and what I've suggested you're going to do is down, down, up, up, down, up. So that's one crotchet, a quarter note, uh, and then uh, six quavers or eighth notes, okay, with the tie on beat three. So it's been using it in loads of the Bruce videos so far. So down, down, up, up, down, up, but putting picking in there. Again, it's quite minimal, this bit. It's not as sort of rocky as the kind of intro kind of chords. Okay, so, but this is roughly, I think, what Bruce kind of does. Um, so bit of strumming and picking so down down up up down up will work really well um especially in a band situation with open mic so down down up up down up so do that with the a major so down down and then the up for the b the b g d g again you can vary this up as well down down up up down up and the f sharp minor do the same thing you can do those two bars twice Then B minor, same sort of thing. Just strum it all if you want, if you weren't too keen on the picking side of things. Okay, so that's down, down, just picking the B, G, D, G. Then D sus2 or D5. So here I'm going down, down, E, B, G, B. Yeah, or even just a D5. And then B minor, you do those two bars again. And the split bar suggests it's just going down, down, up, down, down, up. So that's one crotch here, a quarter note, two quavers or eighth notes. So it's down, one, two, and, okay, for each chord. So B minor and D, so that's two or D5. And then the E major for the next bar, just do a whole bar of down, down, up, up, down, up. Cool, so I'll just play that. Uh, so this is the first and second verses, that 10 bar phrase. <coughs> so bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, three. that beats us two twice. Split bar. <coughs> cool, so it's worth remembering to the third verse, that's actually no guitar at all. So that's when everything drops out and it's boom, boom, boom on the bass drum with Max. And it kind of builds up with piano and bass. And the third verse, it's exactly the same structure chord-wise if you're doing this in a band and need to know for the piano or bass or whatever. So, so it's the same structure, but there's an extra bar of E uh, as well, but there's no guitar in the third verse. Cool, so let's just take a look at the first, <coughs> second, and third choruses. Okay, so what we've got is we've got this, um, D, the chords are D major, E, and then E to F sharp minor, okay? So rhythm wise, you've got this down, down, up, up, down, up. I think that's what's happening. But you're changing your chord on the and of two. So it's <clears throat> the first upstroke is when you're changing the chord. So down, down, up, up, down, up. And you start the next bar with the E. Down, down, up, up, down, up. And you do this three times, okay? So down, down. D, which you, and then you just stop. So it's one, two, three, four, and I think it's got this kind of 
one and two and three and four and so eight quavers for the next bar and the first half uh you've got half a beat rest so it's one and then do down strokes a bit more impact one and two and three and four and now uh, i think in the original version this second so you've got those three rounds of d e e f sharp minor and in the original version uh, so i've got a video on that as well i think he does a c sharp minor to f sharp minor on the second round so the original version round one Round, sorry, just go back to the normal thing. Now, I think it's kind of weird when I was listening to this, I was watching Bruce and I think he's just doing the same thing, but then the bass occasionally and the piano might be doing the C sharp minor. So, for the backing track I've made for this, I was kind of did that as well. So, you've got a little bit, it's almost like you've got a bit of C sharp minor and a bit of E on round two of these kind of choruses. Okay, so I just play that cor the first and second choruses one more time. So, three rounds of this two bar phrase. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. Cool, so the third chorus is slightly different. Basically, you're gonna do those that two bar pattern um, four times, but on the fourth time, it's got a kind of cool little rhythmic thing where you stop uh, instead of the note being tied. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is the third chorus, you're gonna do it four times. So instead of being a tie, and then everyone stops, and then ba ba ba, and then up, down, that fourth round again, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, So it's just a slight sort of variation that kind of keeps it uh, interesting as well. Cool. So they are. That's the the verse sections, and then the chorus sections. Okay. So the chords underneath the sax solo and guitar solo two are just the same as a normal verse and a normal chorus. So it's a normal verse that goes underneath the a sax solo and a standard chorus that goes underneath guitar solo two. Don't forget the guitar solo two and guitar solo three, those will be uh, available to subscribe stars and patrons uh, from Monday, I think, yep. Okay, cool, so then basically, so what you've got, that's pretty much all the parts, uh, and then after that, the third chorus, you've got a huge outro, uh, I worked out as 24 rounds because you've got lots of different things going. You've got an organ solo, you've got a call and, call and response, you've got the oohs and the woes with Bruce. So there's 24 rounds of that. That two bar phrase. That's in the outro. And then you've got guitar solo three. So guitar solo three, you've got, that's 18 rounds of the that, those two bars. And basically, the kind of last two bars, you've got just D to E. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And you can either kind of rest or kind of carry on with that. So it's basically, so they give you kind of just the ending kind of bars. D to E, the first one is one and a half beats. So it's one, two, and three, four. And then E to F sharp minor. One, two, and three, four. Again, you can rest or kind of build up like that. And it's roughly seven or eight bars, and then stop it dead with an F sharp minor. Cool, so that's all the parts. Hope you've enjoyed this video. This has probably been the most challenging one I've ever done. Uh, it's, that intro solo is pretty crazy, but such a cool, I mean, the energy levels are amazing. It's such a brilliant live version. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications if you haven't already. Feel free to leave any comments or feedback and things like that in the comments section below. Uh, cool, so um, the guitar solo videos, so guitar solos two and three will be available on subscribe site on Patreon from Monday. Uh, and also if you want to get any tabs or guitar profiles, so all the, ta all the tabs, I, I use it, this program called Guitar Pro. Uh, and if you want, if you don't use that program, that's fair enough, but you can get it in a guitar PDF tab format. Also the backing tracks, I've made quite a few, well over 30 now, 
Um, these are all sent out via email, you know, on the third of the month from on subscribe star and Patreon. Um, so any files and guitar solo videos are all on there. There's quite a few of them already on there. And also if you want to see extra tab and uh, chord diagrams during the kind of the breakdown lesson section of the video, uh, these are all on um, the upcoming videos. These are all on subscribe start and Patreon as well. So feel free to check that out. Feel free to send, um, you know, send me an email or comment if you want any more details on subscribe start and Patreon. Thanks very much again to watching. Uh, thanks again to Jim Fitzpatrick for requesting the song. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.